Welcome to Good Mythical More. If you know, you know. Here we are. We're doing this. What? But first, we're boogieing down oh. now. What face were you making? Just a happy boogie down face, kind of like I was. Oh, you were scrunchy. That's my new face. All right. Sometimes you're invited to a thing, and you're supposed to bring something. You don't know what to bring. You got to figure it out. We're gonna help you do that right now in Good Mythical More. Yes, these are all very relatable uh, events and occasions we're gonna be talking about. Okay, let's hear one. For instance, your sibling has joined a cult. And they're throwing an end of the world party. It happens. They've told you to leave all your earthly possessions behind, but to bring a dish, as it's a potluck. <laughs> what do you bring? Typically, uh, when you've got a relative in a cult, they're estranged from you. That's that's kind of part of being in a cult. Is that you know they cut ties. They usually don't invite you to these end of the world parties. So it's kind of cool when you get invited. I think it means you're a member of the cult if you get invited. Or they're recruiting you. You got to keep your guard up. So you want to bring something. That, that says, you know what? I'm here for my sibling, but hopefully to rescue them. And my guard's up. I am not susceptible to your cultish notions. So some kind of, I mean, you could get a cake and you could write that on it, but that's a little overt. You gotta wanna be a little bit more subtle. I think, the, honestly, I think the thing you bring is the part of the strategy of rescuing your, your sibling. Right. I think it's gotta be something that gives everyone diarrhea. Oh, there you go. I hate rat. to say it, but I think you're gonna have to poison Food poisoning. The cult. Food poisoning. Which isn't that what happened in that uh, that documentary on Netflix? Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, Big Country? Uh, what's it called? Was it the people in the cult poison the town? They, they poison they poisoned the, the they town. They poison the so the this small is town. reversal. You have to poison the cult. <clears throat> you don't want to kill them. You just want to give them a, everybody, well, including yeah, your relative. You don't want to kill them. That's the whole. They're real gonna, bad diarrhea. They're gonna they're gonna kill themselves, right? So. You want to stop them from killing themselves by poisoning them. And ironically. then you make eye contact with your sibling as they're like uh, diarrheaing, and you just hold up a diaper. It's a lure. You're like, you want this? I know you want this. And you run, and they follow you, and then you put them in the back of a truck. So what's what's the biggest thing? Biggest dish that okay. can go that can turn, but you don't know no, it. No, I think you have to. You the dish has to be something that you know your sibling hates. But that so everybody else loves. Exactly. So then your sibling doesn't eat the dish, so there's no diapers involved. Right. Like e even better. That's call what my that's the answer says. Them. Call it call it sour pork. You have to call it. It's like oh, it's yeah, it smells rancid because it's sour. Well, I mean, it just depends on what sour your, pork casserole. It depends on what your you call it. Big country is wild wild country. <laughs> just saw that wild wild country. Heaven's uh, Gate is the poisoning of a town, not wild. Country. No, Wild Wild Country, they did it. They did it. They too. did it with a buffet in town in that town. 751 people contracted salmonella. <laughs> got a lot of eyes, wide eyes. They went down there to the Oregon yep. buffet and they in the small town and they poisoned everybody. How do you guys feel now? How do these eyes feel now? Now that you told me to say that. Yeah. What? I would say some sort of big flat casserole. Yeah, a sour pork casserole. That's it. It depends on, it's it, supposed to smell like it that. Depends Eat on, it. It Eat depends it. on what your your sibling's taste is. It'll usher you right into the right into the next level. That was a great idea. I mean, it's a terrible idea because you're going to give a lot of people diarrhea. But I think that was really strategic. Yeah. I'm I'm proud of your answer. Here's the thing, though. Job. Here's the thing. You can't force someone out of a cult. If you grab somebody out of a cult against their will, they'll go right back to it. You ha they have to come out of a cult on their own power. So that's where I feel like you got to actually you need to find the favorite food that only your sibling likes and then you da you dangle that and you run away. <laughs> you, you bring it and then you run so away. So you, you you poison your sibling. So there's no my this version there's no poison. No, I think I think you could just do it that way. But Stevie, you know it, it it's interesting you say it's like the lesser of two evils. Reminds me of a story that I was told last time I went home, uh, the local doctor in Lillington, came up to me. Uh, 
Oh. At, a, at, at a funeral, actually. That's an honor. And he was like, you know what, I've, I've got a story for you. This is Dr. Briggs. Yes. You remember Dr. Briggs? I do. Dr. Briggs is retired now, yeah, so I'm at the funeral. I think he's seen my nuts. Uh, he's seen my nuts, too. Yeah. When I saw him and he introduced himself, I immediately thought, you've not only seen, but you've touched my nuts. Like that that, that hand I'm shaking right now is shaking my nuts. Yeah, because he, for, for he, medical he would do the turn and cough. Yeah, he did. You know, when you, you, you had to get the uh, the hernia inspection before you could play soccer. And yeah, uh, or any sport really. I went. That's the only sport I really wanted to play. Yeah, yeah. It would. It was hernia test was for all, any sport. Um, before that, my mom would take. My mom worked at the health department. I'm digressing here, but it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, wait, uh, wait. When was this? Uh, uh, middle school. This That's doesn't a, happen. It's a tough now. time to drop your trial, especially when your mom works at the health department, and. She's like, you know what, instead of you going to the doctor, why don't you just come to my place of work with the women that I work with and I'll send you into this room that's not an exam room and then- They'll touch your this, pulse. You know, Linda here, who you know and who knows me, is going to uh, hold your balls while you cough. And you agree to this? I wanted to play soccer. I mean, the sacrifices you make. And so the next year I was like, mom, I don't wanna go back to Linda. I, I, I wanna, can I make an appointment somewhere? And I think you went to Dr. Briggs, so maybe I'd mention that. I think everybody did. So this is something you both were doing. We weren't, it wasn't, This is it not wasn't something a hobby. they do. Every, I, 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 every, I've not heard you this. Have balls. Every not. single person, or every single dude who made, who played sports in the, or late 80s, they had a 90s, medical check you before get, you, you were to cleared to play. turn and cough, it was like. That is so weird. Yeah. Um, I just so, thought it was a, a unique, unique part of your did, upbringing. Did like, anybody else? We, no. Anybody we else? We learn a lot. Uh, yeah, it's like every okay. guy here. Turn, oh, every guy here. Turn and cough. Every athletic no, no. guy here. Oh, oh. no! I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting Shots fired. Those. Shots fired. So the next year, I went to Doctor Briggs and I turned and coughed. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. when I saw him at the funeral, that's the first thing I thought. When you shook his hand, did you turn and cough? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's just a, it's a re reflex. I'm not touching that guy's hands. Uh, oh, you fist bumped him. I mean, I don't care about him touching my balls. It's just all the other balls. It's all worn off by now. He's retired. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't been retired that long. But he said, you know what? I've, I've got a story about your, balls. Uh, about your granddad, Lincoln. Huh. Uh, that I always think about, and I just wanted—I just wanted to tell you. I was like, "Hey, well, you know what? We're at a funeral. Go for it." And um, he said that he went to the—he got a call. He was like, "This is decades ago, when your when your grandfather Lincoln was chief of police in Lillington." He said, "I got a call to the um, Birds Grocery Store, which is now a IGA Piggly Wiggly, uh, a church, church." <laughs> he said a man a man had collapsed at the checkout line and uh so i started I, and he was out so i had to i had to give him cpr mouth to mouth oh and uh once i started doing that trying to resuscitate this man everybody cleared away except for your grandfather because you know he was the chief of police, and at a certain point, um, he said, I, ne "I needed some help. I needed to do something." Uh, so I turned to your grandfather, and I said, "Can you take over?" And he he said that my papa Lincoln <coughs> started coughing and said, "I think I'm coming down with something. I don't want to give it to him." <laughs> <laughs> Lesser of two evils, Stevie. Oh, wow. Was there a happy was ending to the story, uh, or did the man was just like, die? He was like, the guy was already dead, and he knew it. <laughs> Are you joking? Yeah, he was already dead. That's the end of the story? Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, somebody, wait, you give them mouth to mouth, but they're already dead. I don't want to give that dead man <laughs> what I've got. <laughs> the last thing he needs is a cold on top of being dead. <laughs> you see the humor in there. Yeah. He told me, yeah, that's the story. I think I'm coming down with something. I don't want to give it oh, to him. Oh, and he did a fake cough. Did he do that when he told you the story? Yes. <laughs> that's how he told his story. Man. 
You are so related to your family. <laughs> yeah, I can see you doing that. Okay. Uh, your daughter wow. has married a vampire. Cool. They're cool, very happy together. Cool. What blood-related dish do you bring to Christmas to make him feel like he's part of the family? So they celebrate cr- Christmas, but they are they're vampires now. They're, they're well, cl- unclear about the daughter. Daughter could not be a vampire. Right. Is, she, is he going? She's Jewish. Is, <laughs> but but she She's wants Jewish? to be. She wants to be. Your daughter is converted to Judaism and married a vampire. She's wow. very confused. Um, well, no, maybe she's got it all figured out. Well, so, so is well, is he is the vampire going to bite Lily? Let's make this personal. Let me look. So, is there an agreement uh, here? It's like, it does not seem as if the vampire is going to bite Lily. No. Okay. Good. No, he's happy to, or she. Right, just to or be. They. Just or to be vampire. Just to be in partnership with my daughter. Yep. And and the way that they do not consume your daughter's blood is via these bloody dishes that you're bringing. To so Christmas. this is important, you know, because this is going to help. I don't think vampires. Satiate. I mean, I I don't want to speak for all vampires, but I will. I don't think they enjoy blood unless it's directly from the source. I don't think that they want like a blood infused. No, have you not seen True Blood? I mean, True Blood was a synthetic beverage, but it did sustain them. So, yes. Oh, hold on. I didn't watch True Blood. Oh, oh you got to watch True Blood. It's a good classic. They had synthetic HBO. blood beverages? Are there like six That's what True Blood cuts? is. True Blood is a product. Let me tell you about the synopsis of True Blood. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you know, sexy, vampires right? live out in the open with regular people. Oh, and is that Skarsgård? Uh, guys, how did you sleep on this? Oh, Skarsgård is okay. Um, Anna, Anna Paquin, now. uh, and the way that they don't eat humans is because they've manufactured this true blood drink. So now you can get true blood. They serve true blood at different restaurants and convenience stores so that vampires can walk amongst regular people. And this is where we're headed. Wow. This is with our answer. <laughs> You just bring a six pack of True Blood. I mean, I didn't even know it was a thing. So True Blood is a is a is a beverage. Yeah, that's cheesy, man. It's a good show that goes for many seasons. Right? How much do they? <laughs> yeah. How much do they show in the Naughty Naughty? They show they show some. They show how much little, do they show in the Naughty Naughty? They show a little, a little TNA, right? Well, it's an HBO show. Yeah. But okay. it's HBO like late two thousands. Does it hold up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've actually watched it recently. It's like it's like in the kind of six feet under uh, category. It's, it's oh, gosh, I don't like gotta blood watch forward shows. You know, it. I, I don't know. I, I like it. I would recommend. All flavor, no bite. Okay, huh? Um. So yeah. See, you can create something, and and uh, I mean, you could just have bags of blood. You could just back up the blood mobile. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think I'd bring True Blood and put my own private label on it. I like that. That's what I do. I, we we made this just for you, George. Call it Blood Brothers. Call it Blood Daddy. Because okay. I'm the daddy. Okay, Blood Daddy. Blood Daddy in law. Blood Daddy in law. Yeah, that's not as catchy as Blood Daddy. Uh, you know what? Before we can keep playing this great game. Um, <laughs> I do want to let you know that we have a secret. We've been keeping we've been keeping a secret for a while now. It's an announcement, and we will be making an announcement soon. But let me tell you right now, the only way that you can get any insight in what this big secret announcement is is by going over to the Mythical Society, where we did a little sneak peek to give you mm, a kind of a tease of what that secret might be. If you're really perceptive, maybe you'll figure it out. Uh huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, and also, if you if you look in the comments of this video, no one's going to reveal the secret there. But what we've already been reading the comments in the uh, main video, and um, what we learned is that this is a reference to Ben Ten. Ben Ten, the animated. Because you had a watch. Series. My son actually had the watch. The licking part we don't know about, <laughs> but in the comments, thank you for telling us in the comments that this is from. I think if the watch Benton. gets old, sometimes it needs a little sliva just to. Don't let us forget that. 
Don't forget that. There's you should combine that with some industrial dancing. <laughs> Next time we boogie down, it's all about get, wrist slapping. Get ready for it. Uh, okay, this next one is a Carney special. Wow. He would like me to read it, and I am slightly confused on. Uh, oh, to be clear, Megan wrote it, but Carney really likes it. Good. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, Megan Malone? Yes. <laughs> You're about to meet your prison husband, but in all your letter writing. See, this is where I'm lost. Because yeah, your prison that, husband, early to be you lost. don't really write letters to, but okay, Megan. fine. Is Megan in You're the You're about to meet your prison husband. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. now she's not she, She's like, I definitely didn't, didn't, didn't write this one. Uh, but, oh, the prison husband? Yeah, it wasn't me. It, you forgot to ask him what his favorite last meal would be. Okay, so this is a person that is on death row that you are that you're writing to and you're not in prison. Can we talk about the definition of prison husband after this? When we cut, I'll let you know what, what that actually means. But This just means a sure. husband who's in prison. This is, this is a man who's in prison who you've been writing to who you love. And he is about to die. And you're going to feed him his last meal. And, but you don't know what it is. So you're going to have to guess. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you bring to that particular occasion? I'd like to clarify, Maisie is the one who wrote this. Okay. Uh, and okay. we will talk afterwards. All right, Maisie. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is tough. This is, this so you is don't, mor morally complex. So, so you, the, the, the communication is one way. Uh, unclear. It, it could be a pen pal situation. You could have fallen for each other point, via though. letter. But at people do point, fall in love after someone's yeah. in prison. That he, he's yeah, being yeah, yeah. led to the chamber and he can't reply to the letter. And it's like, oh, tell me what you want. So you just got to show up with it. Um, <clears throat> this is the last meal. Because some people fall in love, didn't. Like, Excellent series on Manson over on the fell in love kitchen, with somebody and got married, right? I, d I do. F yeah, I think that this is a thing. The, the other definition of prison husband um, would be, you know, if you entered into... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It would be a relationship that starts when you're in prison. Yeah. And you know exactly what he likes to eat. <laughs> <laughs> no, why did no one else laugh? <laughs> no one else laughed. That was one of my better. Everyone else was just sad, was, I guess. That, that was sad, my, upset. My, my brighter moments. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. <laughs> I don't have an answer. I don't think it did. I, you know what? I think this is the unanswerable question. What do you bring someone who who's having their last meal and you don't know what they like? Cyanide. I think you just look up most pot. I think pizza. Most popular I mean, popular how could foods. you go wrong with pizza? Hey, I got you pizza. Everybody loves it. Oh, you're lactose intolerant. <laughs> See, I mean, it's just... It's yeah, just but it doesn't matter. Question. You it could matter, still be man. lactose intolerant. See? There you go. In fact, that's probably what you want. Yeah, I brought you pizza. <laughs> Cyanide laced. Just get it over with. And we're back to poison. <laughs> Reject one color cup boredom and embrace multi-color cup mythicality. Get the color-changing mythic cup variety pack now at mythical.com.